Good morning, Jesus Image Church. Welcome. We want to say welcome to our online family. Thank you guys for joining us. I have such high expectations for this morning. I just feel like the Lord is going to do something so mighty today. And I want all of us to just set our hearts on him right now. I'm going to read out of Psalms 57. It says, my heart is steadfast, O oh God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody, awake my glory, awake, O oh harp and lyre, I will awaken the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O oh Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations, for your steadfast love is great to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Be exalted, O oh God, above the heavens, let your glory be all over the earth. Can we all just lift our hands and welcome him in this place? Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you, Lord. This is your morning. This, these are your people, Lord. We welcome you, Lord. We have not come for another church service. We have come to worship you, to behold you, and to encounter you, Jesus. We will not settle for anything less, Lord. We invite you, Jesus make your presence known to us and I thank you that in the name of Jesus many will be healed this morning many will be set free and many will come to know you Jesus in Jesus name amen
to say his robe as he walks into the room where people pray when we hear praise as he hears Into the room where people pray when we hear worshiping.
Thank you, Jesus. You are holy and you are worthy, Lord. And we have come for you today, Jesus. We have come for you today, Jesus. And we thank you for, for what you're going to do today. We come expectant. We come expectant for you to encounter us, Lord. So Holy Spirit, come have your way in this place, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we just give a shout to the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, worship team. If you want to thank the worship team. I don't know about you, but I am excited and expectant today. And just to be in this place, the, the faithfulness of the Lord. You know, we were at the Sheraton, we were at Edgewater, and now we get to be here at Lake Brantley. And what a privilege. It really is his church. It's not about our building, although we are looking forward to our building. But what a joy to gather that he's made a place for us week after week. And so I'm excited for what he's going to do here these next few months. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to continue in worship with our offering, tithes and offerings today. Amen. Yes. Amen. And I want to read today from Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. And this is Jesus talking, and he says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart is also. And I think it's safe to say, if you would look at our bank account, I know people say this often, we know where our heart is where our finances go towards. And I've, the Lord has been speaking to me so much about generosity and tithe and offering lately. And I can't help but think of one day we will truly stand before the Lord. And I think our hearts, all of our hearts will be, I wish I gave more, more of my love, more of my time, more of my affections. But I'm reminded of something that Michael said a few weeks ago when he was speaking to us through Zoom, and he was opening his closet and looking at his clothes, and he was like, I just want to give it all away. I just want to give more. And I believe that is our heart posture. I know as a church, he's called us to be generous. But if you look at my heart, you look at where my resources go towards, the money in the pocket for, for who the Lord's going to put in front of us that we're quick to give. We come in Sunday ready to give into the hands of Jesus. Amen. I want my finances to reflect my heart for the Lord because everything that I have, the clothes, my house, my vehicle, we are a blessed people here in America. Amen. I want my heart and my finances to reflect one another. Amen. So it is a joy to give today our tithe. You know, our tithe is our 10%. It's our first. It's our best. That is for the Lord. That's his. It belongs to him. But then our offering is that above and beyond. And I believe this church is going to step into generosity like never before. And we're going to see the fruit of it because we can trust that when we're generous to him, that he's faithful to bless us. Amen. Amen. So I just want to pray for you today. Jesus, we come to you today, Lord, as cheerful givers, Lord. So thankful, so thankful, Lord, for the freedom to come into this place, into this building with the lights and the worship and the music, everything provided for. And so, Jesus, we give into your hands today. Lord, make our hearts so ready and willing to give at any opportunity, Lord. Let us be the first ones to run to the bucket, the first ones to pull out our phones to give to you in response to all that you've done for us, Jesus. So bless everyone that gives today, Lord. Multiply the seed, Jesus. Use it for your glory, Lord. Thank you that there would be no lack, Jesus. There would be no lack in any family. In Jesus' name, it is our joy to give into your hands today, Lord. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. So we, if you're in the room, if you need an envelope, we are spread out here. Just lift your hand really high and our ushers will find you. You can look to the numbers on your screen to give. I believe we have this amazing QR code now if you're watching online. We invite you to give. If Jesus' image has blessed you, we invite you to give to the Lord today too. Use your cameras if you're not sure how to use that. Just take out your phone, open your camera, and that'll take you right to the link. And we will be right back. feels good to be here, huh? Awesome. Well, I love you guys. Today, I feel like this is going to be just a spirit-filled day. Um, I do have my part three, Joshua Generation, but I'll preach on that next time. Um, it's ready to go. But next time, I feel like God is going to do something really special today. I'm going to have our team up here in a moment. Um, as you know, we sent a team to the border of Ukraine, and they just got back. And we had said, Michael and I said recently, we are like, we feel like God is going to start a missions movement through Jesus' image. And 
Now we do have one, I guess. So, um, you know, we always love to send and support. So, of course, we're, we're sending our finances, Jesus Images. That's you. So thank you so much. So we're helping so many people on the ground. But we're like, you know what? We want to go and be there and help. So I'm going to have the teams up in a moment. But I want to share this verse real quick. Uh, the Lord often will just drop verses in my heart um, when I'm worshiping. And I feel like this is for us right now. It's in Philippians 4.4. 4. You don't have to turn there, but I'm going to read it to you. This is the King James Version. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. That's important. Thanksgiving is the doorway into so many things. Let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Through Christ Jesus. Amen? Okay. Ryan, if you can get the teams ready, Michael wanted me to update you, so when they're coming up here, I'll update you. He wanted me to show the picture that I shared on social media. Do we have it? It's coming. Yes. Um, so he, <laughs> people were like, he looks so great. And I was like, that was pre-op, post-op. And we're like, uh. I was like, no, it's, it, that's not what he looked like after. That was right before. Um, everyone's like, he looks wonderful, but he is doing great. He's doing amazing. Uh, the doctor came out and said, I mean, as you guys know, he, it was from overuse and misuse and just, um, he preached through Jesus 21, and his voice was bothering him. He probably shouldn't have done that, but he's doing amazing now. The doctor came out and said everything went perfect. They expect a full recovery very quickly. Yeah, he's, he's doing wonderful, and he has to stay off of his voice for one week after surgery, and then little by little, he will be building up the strength. So he will be preaching here on this pulpit very soon, and we're so excited. So thank you guys so much for your prayers. They really carried us through. God is faithful and above all, and I don't even know what we would do without Jesus. Do you? He's faithful. So Michael, he'll be, I'm sure, here next week, but he's resting and recovering, and he's doing really great. So here are our beautiful teams. Why don't we just thank them for what they did? They went to the border of Ukraine. It was, yeah. We honor you guys. They, they came to our house um, the night before they went, and it was just something that happened so fast. Um, Jesus Image, we did send funds to um, people on the ground like Ben Fitzgerald and others that are right there still helping so many people. And Michael just had this little thought. He goes, I, I want to give, of course, and we're going to. And we did. He goes, but I want to send some people. I want to help. I want to be there. And that's what we feel like God is going to do when there is a tragedy or something. We want to be there on the ground, helping those in need, sharing Jesus with everybody. So I called Ryan and Jenna. I'm like, do you think we can pull this off? Like, we need to make sure people have passports, that they're ready to go. And Ryan said, I had a dream about this. Right? Do you want to share what you saw in the dream? So I, it was about a year ago, I had a dream that um, we were flying into a, a nation that was um, basically at war. There was missiles going over, and I could see it, so I knew it was, there was conflict. Um, and as I was on the, the plane, there was a, a few Jesus School students as well, so I knew we were coming as a movement, um, you know, coming to a nation. And as I was flying over there, Michael was giving me, uh, Pastor Michael was giving me specific instructions on what to do once we hit the ground. And, um, and I can hear that just playing in my mind. So the moment um, Jessica called us, it was like that dream popped in my head. And I was like, wow, this is exactly what I saw a year ago. And here we he said, I want to go too. And so um, thank you for your prayers. And I want to just, I want you guys to share just some of what God did. I mean, you guys were preaching the gospel, helping those in need, and we do have some pictures, and maybe after you guys share, we can show some of the pictures, and keep praying. We need Jesus, you guys. The world is crying out for Jesus. He is our only hope, but Esther, and you know Esther, she runs our, our children's program. Mother Goose here. <laughs> we love you so much. Share what God did, what you saw. Yes, give it up for Esther. She's amazing. 
We, we knew that somebody needed to go to be there for the mothers and the children. And we're like, Esther is the perfect person to go. And she, she does such a great job with our children here. So share what God did, Esther. Yeah, it was such an honor just to be there. And I just wanted to thank you guys for covering our team in prayer. Um, I know that all of us felt your prayer so strongly. And it was beautiful. Every time we encountered someone, we would tell them, Everyone around the world is praying for you guys and praying for peace in Ukraine. And instantly they would start weeping and weeping and weeping. So just know that your prayers are so effective. When we were there, we saw a lot of brokenness. And um, one of the last days we got to go to the refugee shelter. And there was lots of families, lots of kids who had to say bye to their um, fathers and their um, brothers or and wives saying bye to their husbands and their sons. And so it was so much brokenness and we got to go in and I was with the, the, the moms and the kids and we were pray, playing with the kids. And when you go in, there was like this room um, where toys were everywhere. It smelled like urine in there. It was just broke. It was just so hard to watch it, but I knew God wanted to encounter these kids. And so as we were getting to play with them, um, we gathered all the kids around and we got to share the good story about the shepherd who came for them and then gave the kids an opportunity to give their lives and we had many kids respond give their lives to Jesus and it was so beautiful <laughs> yes got to share with them and we're like once Jesus in your heart he'll never leave you he'll always protect you and it was just so beautiful to see the Lord meeting them <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah, so there, even when we got there, um, even on the way there, the Lord was speaking a lot about specifically healing um, in the first day. And um, they can all contest, too, that there was just such a grace. There was such an ease. Um, and every person um, that, we, that I had the privilege of uh, laying hands on was healed. Um, yeah. And it's by the Holy Spirit, it's not by power, not by might, but it's by his spirit. Um, and so, for instance, there was this gentleman, just to give you guys a rough estimate, um, it was, it's cold, it's winter. Um, and so there was this gentleman who was, could barely walk and his leg was really swollen and it was bleeding. Um, and I asked him his name and, um, and he said, yeah, I walked 64 kilometers. So just to give you an estimate, 64 kilometers is just under 40 miles. Um, so a lot of the border to get out was blocked with vehicles. So they had to walk miles. They went days without food, without shelter, um, mothers and, and their kids. And, and so um, I asked if I can pray for him. And um, immediately the Lord touched him and we, you know, we kept the prayer simple because there was a language barrier and there is nothing that can stand away uh, or stand in the way of the Lord moving. Um, and all you need is that mustard seed. And so the Lord healed him completely. He had full range of motion. Bleeding was gone. Swelling was gone. I just want to say thank you too, guys, so much for praying for us. There were definitely times when we were there where me and Colleen even talked about it, where we, we knew, we said, like, people back home are praying for us. We felt the grace of God. And um, just like she was saying, you know, healings and salvations came so easy. And it's because light shines the greatest in darkness, you know. And the Lord was there in the middle of the chaos. Um, but some of, you know, like my favorite uh, memories of the trip, you know, it, was, it would just be like when we would hug people. They didn't even really know what we were saying to them, but you knew that the peace of God was exchanged through a hug. You know, the Father's love was exchanged through a hug. And um, we got to do that time and time again. And um, there was one day where we were ministering at a train station where, like, thousands of refugees were coming in and, and trying to, to flee the country. And in the back of this train station, there was a lady, and uh, she was there. She had uh, two small kids with her. I believe her mother was with her, and she was telling me that her husband had just gone back to Ukraine to help fight in the war. And she was very emotional, very distraught, obviously. And um, I just got to encourage her. She was already a believer, so I was just, I felt like I was supposed to share the verse, you know, in Romans 8, that nothing could separate her from the love of God in Christ Jesus, not war, not affliction, height, nor depth. And... Um, 
And, you know, as she was being encouraged, you could just see the peace of God come over her. And by the end of it, she was preaching to me and she was saying, I know because of what you guys are doing here and seeing how God is moving and all these ministries here that are ministering to us and helping us. She said, I know that good is going to defeat evil. I know that light is going to beat darkness. And she was encouraging me by the end of it. Yeah. Yeah, um, First of all, I just think what an honor that we have, that we have pastors that, and a ministry that says yes in the middle of conflict and a war that, you know, send us, that we're, we're going to go. We're going to go right into the middle of it. And just like they said, we felt your guys' prayers. We can tangibly feel it as we're ministering and as we're there. There was just such a grace on that. And so we're truly thankful. And we, um, I, one, one testimony that really stands out was a young man that I got to I got to lead to the Lord, but what was crazy is he was going to school in Ukraine, and bombs were going off. They heard it where he was at in his dorm all around them. So what they did is they went into a bunker for two days. They didn't have any food or any water, anything to drink, but they stayed down there until the noise basically subsided. And as soon as they got out, uh, he took a train, or he took a train. He walked 50 miles to the train station, just just walked 50 miles, and then w- took the train right across the border to Poland, right where we were at, right at the border. And so I saw him as he was coming off the train, and I just felt the love of God for him. And so I started sharing, you know, the gospel with him and what Jesus has done in my life. And he uh, he believed in in many different things, but at the end of it. I said, man, he is the only hope. He is the only way. I said, it's through Jesus Christ and him alone. And he can see, and he was asking questions like, are you for real? I said, I promise you, man. And so I led him, uh, and I just led him to the Lord, basically, in a prayer. And you could see his countenance change completely. He, he had joy on his face. And he's like, I don't know what this is. He said, I, I feel uplifted. I don't know what, what to tell you. I said, it's Jesus Christ, man. He is here. And so, yeah. I'm just... Aren't you guys proud of them? I'm so proud of you guys. Yeah, give it up. I I want to um, first say continue to pray. There's still people there that are, uh, Ben Fitz and his team is still there. There's many other people that are still there. Um, You know, if God tells us to send another team, we're going to send another team but they need prayer. Can we just go real quick into a time of prayer? Can we just pray just for the nations of the world right now need Jesus? And I know that there is so much uncertainty right now in the world, so many things to be afraid of, so many things to take your attention from Jesus, but Jesus is above all, and we as a people have to believe that with all of our heart. He's all we have. He is the only thing that we can depend on. So Jesus, right now, we come before you, Lord. Jesus, the nations are crying out. Jesus, your people are hurting. But we know that you are faithful to the end, Jesus. So right now, Lord, we lift up all of those affected, Jesus, by the situation going right now on, Lord. And we thank you, God, for protection. Holy Spirit, we ask for divine, heavenly wisdom, God, for Ben and his team right now as they're still on the ground. Holy Spirit, I thank you, God, that nothing happens, Lord, without your directing. So even direct those people right now, Lord, to the right places, Jesus. Holy Spirit, be with them. Lord, use Ben and his team right now to share the gospel, Lord, to help those in need, Jesus. Lord, we trust you. We believe you. Come on, church, agree, Lord. We thank you for the blood of Jesus to cover those affected right now, all of those affected, Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that you are in control, Jesus. Nothing takes you by surprise. You are in control of all, Jesus, and we thank you, God, for your peace right now, just as we read, your peace that surpasses all understanding, Jesus. When things don't make sense, God, you still give us your peace, Lord. So we thank you for your peace right now. And we thank you for your protection for those people, God. Holy Spirit, make Jesus so real to them right now in Jesus' name. Make Jesus so real, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. And thank you, Father. Thank you, God. We trust you, Jesus, in your mighty name. Amen. 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 
Esther is going to share with you for a moment. And I want you to prepare your hearts because I think God is even moving on people right now. And afterwards, we're going to take communion. And I believe God is going to heal many of you sick in body. We've been seeing this happen at an alarming rate right now, not alarming in a good way. So many people, that wasn't the right word, but it's okay, you know what I meant. At an amazing rate right now. So many people are getting healed. I want you to prepare your hearts. There was a gentleman that I was told that came a couple weeks ago, and I guess our music or maybe my preaching was too loud for him, and he went and sat in the hall. See, there's no distance with the Holy Spirit. He went and sat in the hall um, because everything was so loud, and he had a heart condition, and I guess I called out a heart condition. I don't remember doing that. And he got healed in the hallway. He was supposed to go to the doctor, and he did go to the doctor, I should say, to get everything checked out. He was going to need surgery, correct? For He had blockage in his arteries. He went in to get the procedure, and everything was fine. See, that's what God does. So I want you to prepare your heart right now. And then I believe we're going to have a time where the Holy Spirit is going to move at the end of the service. So I want you guys to be in prayer. And if you're watching online, prepare your hearts right now. But Esther, I want you to just share for a moment. just want to open up in prayer so if we all could just posture our hearts and just look at Jesus for a moment I have the honor to do the gospel and share with you the good news of Jesus so Jesus we love you Lord we have gathered here for you God we invite you God we just thank you that you are here Holy Spirit we just thank you you're the one who draws hearts to you God I just pray, God, that even now, Holy Spirit, that you would draw the hearts, those that you are highlighting, God, that you would burn with them, within them, God, a hunger to know you deeper, Jesus. We just thank you, God, that it is not an accident that they are here today. And I just pray that you would meet them radically, God, that they would never be the same, Lord. I just ask that you would fill my mouth, Jesus, with your words. In your name we pray, amen. I wanna start off reading in Titus 2, verse 11. It says, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who gave, who are zealous for good works. And this part was just highlighted, like he has purified us for himself. From the very beginning, God's desire was not to just live amongst us, but to live inside us. He desired a place not to live at a distance, but he desired to live amongst us. Even from the garden, it was his heart to be with his people. And then we saw a separation where sin came in. There was a choice given and they chose the world. And it was God's desire, it was his jealousy to be amongst his people. So we can see throughout the Old Testament, his burning desire to live inside his people. And all fell short throughout the Old Testament. Even the most great men fell short of the glory of God. It says, for all have fallen short of the glory of God. But it said that um, yet while we were still sinners, <laughs> that Christ came and he died for us. And so in the New Testament, we see a savior coming, Jesus Christ, who lived a perfect life. Because it said by grace, by grace he brought us salvation. Because he knew that we couldn't do it on our own. 
He knew that we, he, we needed him. And so he lived a perfect life so that we, he would take on all of our sins, all the weight that we deserved. He took it on his back freely that we could live a life of wholeness. I wanna take you to James 4 verse 4. <laughs> you adulterous people, this is the Bible, just. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes an enemy, makes himself an enemy of God. It grieves my heart that there is so many people in the church that are living a life of compromise. Jesus gave himself freely that we could walk in freedom. And I know there's, I grew up in church my whole life and I always, I knew about Jesus. I knew the word I could, I could describe to you. I could tell you stories about Jesus, but it wasn't until I truly encountered Jesus that my life was forever changed. And it's too sad to know that there are people walking in church who, who are living in a compromised life. Maybe you have sins and you, you've been struggling, you've been carrying these burdens on your own for so long. And here I am to tell you that Jesus wants to take every burden that you're carrying because he paid a price for you to walk in wholeness. And so I want to invite those in a moment for those that are feeling the Lord drawing you to give him everything. Maybe you know about Jesus, maybe you could tell me everything about his life, but he's not living inside you. You haven't truly encountered him in the fullness that he desires for your life. And I wanna tell you that in faith today, when you pray this prayer that Jesus is gonna come into your life and he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And you can live a life of freedom in the fullness that he desired for you. So I just want to ask for everyone to close their eyes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And if it, this has pierced your heart and that you want to give everything to Jesus, maybe you knew him from a distance, but God is calling you a little bit closer. If that is you, I want to ask you to raise your hands. And I also want to make a call to those who have fallen out of love with Jesus, first love with him. You don't cry like you used to. And you're feeling a tug and a hunger in the Lord. And the Lord is asking you to give something costly today. I want to invite you that there's a deeper place of intimacy that Christ has for you. And that when you respond, that Jesus is going to meet you with his fullness. So I want to ask everyone to stand, please. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And so if that was you, if you raised your hands to receive Jesus for the first time in his fullness, to walk in full freedom, I want to invite you to the front. And if it was you who raised your hands and you're saying that I want more, I want first love with Jesus, I want to burn again, I want to invite you to the front. It's too costly. It's too costly not to give him everything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Today you're responding to the person of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Even if you're a child in the room and maybe you've gone to church and you've known Jesus through your parents, but today you want to make a decision on your own to follow the Lord, I want to invite you to the front. And Miss Ryan's going to come up and he's going to lead you in a prayer. Thank you, Lord. How precious is this? They're truly encountering Jesus up here. If I could have your guys' just attention just for a couple minutes. I know you guys are encountering the Lord. We're going to walk through a simple prayer. And in this prayer, you guys are going to see Jesus, okay? You're going to talk directly to him because he's here. It is by faith and by faith alone that we receive the life of Jesus, and he receives ours. So we're going to say this together as a family. Come on, we're going to all repeat this. 
Let's say, Jesus Christ, I give you my life. I give you the entirety of my life. I give you my past. I give you my present. And I give you my future. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you rose again on the third day for me. I believe that you ascended to the right hand of the Father. And one day you're coming back to rule and reign. Today I am born again. Today I deny myself pick up my cross and follow you. I renounce the world. I renounce the past. And I give you my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. We could do better than that. Let's thank the Lord for these precious souls. Thank you, Father. Um, if you guys, if you guys could just look at me briefly, there's a few things that we love to, you know, every week. Looking, following Jesus looks like something, and these next five things are absolutely vital to the Christian life. And number one is that every day that we read the Bible, David said, "I've hid His word in my heart that I may not sin against Him." That the Scriptures come alive, and as they come alive, they're yours. They're in you. And so when lies try to come back or your past or a thought, you have truth inside of you. And number two is that we pray daily. And what prayer is, Jesus did this himself. The Bible says that he would get up early in the morning and he would go to a desolate place, a place of no distraction. What does that mean? A place with just you and him. He did it with the Father. You guys could do it with him. Find a room, find a closet, find whatever it may be, your car. And just talk to the Lord. He's, he is the word, so he is forever speaking. Number three is get connected to a church, a family. This is what we are here. The Bible says that we are to gather ourselves together in love and good works, to stir each other up in love and good works. Or iron sharpens iron, where we can lock arms and run this race together. Number four is to get baptized in water. The Bible says that it's the severing of the old life, the remembrance of yesterday's stain remembrance of sins and maybe things that we wish we never would have done when a moment of baptism the severing of the holy spirit in the waters that we can really step into the death burial and resurrection of christ and god will give you the mind of christ a brand new conscious that's pure and clean before him and number five is the baptize baptism of of the spirit of god upon your guys' life and we're going to pray that right now together as a family he just says ask and he will freely give himself John said, there is one coming after me who's going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. And we believe that today in this moment right now that the Holy Spirit himself baptizes you with himself. And we're even believing for us and, come on, us for in the church that he baptizes us afresh and anew today as well. So let's stretch our hands toward these up here. and We're going to pray together as a family. So Holy Spirit, we say come. We ask that you come, Lord. Father, I pray for a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit for those in their seats and a baptism of the Holy Spirit for those who came up here, Lord. Father, we thank you for your love that is shed abroad in their hearts. Father, I pray for the fire of heaven. God, let it be a fire shut up in their bones like Jeremiah said. Father, I pray for zeal to come alive in them, the gospel to be real to them, by you, Holy Spirit. God, I pray for boldness over each and every one of their lives. Father, I thank you that they will be orators of your gospel, Jesus. They will be unashamed of the gospel. Unashamed, Father, in their workplace and unashamed to their neighbors and family members. And Father, we thank you that you tangibly encounter them, that they feel you and know you and see you, hear you. Jesus, you are real. And we believe in you and you alone. So Holy Spirit, we thank you that it is not by might. It is not by power. It is by your spirit and your spirit alone. So we thank you, Jesus, that you are here with us. Thank you for baptizing them today, Lord. 
into you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on. Let's join with heaven and thank Jesus for everybody that came up here. Father, we thank you, Lord. Jesus, we thank you for every single one in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's welcome them back to their seats, guys. Let's, let's help them as they, they step back into their seats today. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? You know, we just celebrate when one soul gets saved. We need to celebrate like that's a million people getting saved. Same with healing. If Jesus, th yes, come on, why don't we do that? Come on. It's beautiful that God is saving and touching his people. And now we're going to go into a time of communion. And if I can have uh, Jenna and Alex come up. And I just want to share this real quick. When we're taking communion, we're taking the body and the blood of Jesus, and there can be no sickness where the blood of Jesus is. I want to share this story quickly. My Nana, when my grandfather had cancer, the doctors had given up hope. They were telling us to get ready to say goodbye to him, that they had given up hope completely. And my Nana used to take communion with my grandfather every day, and she would say, cancer is only a name. It has to bow to the name of Jesus. It has to, whatever that sickness is in your body, it has to bow to the name of Jesus. Not only did my grandfather get healed completely, he had two brand new kidneys that looked like an 18 year old. So Jesus heals. He wants to heal your body right now. So prepare your hearts. And if you have issues in the mind, God is going to heal you from depression, from anxiety. God is going to heal your entire body from the top of your heads to the soles of your feet because he is healing. All right. We thank you, Jesus. I was feeling that too, Jess, that, that there's those who are weary in this room specifically, and I feel that, that you've been living with weariness for far too long, and Jesus wants to take that and lift your burden and replace it with himself just by the reality of his body and his blood. So if you are watching online, we want to invite you to join us. You can get your elements. If you're in the room, you can get your elements as well. Isaiah 53, 5 says, But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be whole, and he was whipped so that we could be healed. Every time we've been taking communion at school and at church, we've been getting a flood of testimonies coming in of just the presence of Jesus in the room alone brings access to healing and access to life that it was by your cross, Jesus. By what you did is life and life more abundant. So we thank you, Jesus, just by taking your body be, be filled with faith in this room and be filled with faith online that what has happened back at the cross is just as powerful today. It has not gone, gone weaker. It is not wearied down. So we thank you, Jesus, for lifting our weary hearts and our weary minds, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for restoring marriages in this room that just by your body and what you did on the cross, we gain access to healing in life and life more abundant. So we lift the bread like you were lifted high and we break it like you were broken. And we are full of faith, Jesus, that you are on the move, that where your presence is, everything is accessible through you. And we take it in Jesus' name, amen. such a reverence in here today it's undeniable a reverence of the Lord let's take the cup let's lift it high let's lift it in honor the Lord is worthy of honor during this morning I kept hearing the word only 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 I heard Ryan and Jessica almost everyone said it they just kept saying he's the only hope he is the only one. He's the only healer. He's the only Lord. He's our only faith. He is the only one worthy. He is the only one worthy. He's the only one worthy to open the scroll. He's the only one worthy to rip open its seals because he was ripped open on the cross. For he was slain. He was crucified. He was slaughtered 
For Lord, you have redeemed us to the Father, to God by your blood. It was all by your blood. Jessica said there was no distance in the spirit and it's all because the blood of Christ has brought us near, forever near to the Lord, forever near to the Lord. So I pray that we would get near to this precious savior. We would get near to this precious Lord, the healer himself. And we take this cup, the cup of his blood, the cup of the new covenant, and we take it in faith, knowing that our healer loves us. This is all because he loves us. And so today we make a declaration. We say, Lord, we love you back. This is our declaration. This is what we give you. We give you our faith. We give you our hope, knowing that you are our healer and our Lord forever and ever. Yours is the glory. Let's take the blood. As we were taking the body and blood of Jesus, I just feel like God is healing some people right now. Um, there's somebody, you're in the room, you could be watching too, but you suffer with night terrors. You have trouble sleeping at night, but specifically, it's not insomnia, it's specifically night terrors. And the Lord is healing you. If that's you right now, if you can lift your hand, you don't have to, or just receive it by faith, God. Heal that person from those night. There's someone in the back. If you're near them and they can, if you're okay with someone praying, there's actually several in the room. If that's you and you're okay with lifting up your hands, you have night terrors. If you're watching online, you can receive this as well. If you're next to them, you can just put your, your hand on them. Lord, I thank you, God, that these night terrors stop right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you, Father. Your word says that you give your beloved rest and peace, God. So I thank you, God, that all terrors in the night will stop in Jesus' name. All insomnia will go right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, for your peace, God, your beautiful peace that surpasses anything that we can understand in the natural, Lord. And I thank you, God, that you're giving them rest in Jesus' name. And there's even children, um, parents, your children suffer with night terrors. There's, um, God's even healing the children that suffer with night terrors. So I thank you, God. No more night terrors. Let tonight be the first night that they sleep peacefully and sound. And through the night, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Father. Also, glaucoma. If there's anyone in the room that suffers with glaucoma, um, if you could lift your hands and just keep them high. And if you're near that person, you you can um pray for them if they're okay with that. Lord, I thank you that all glaucoma, all vision issues go right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for perfect sight, Jesus. I thank you, God, that, that this, there's even someone that you're supposed to go to the doctor like in a week or so, and I believe God is healing you. You need to test that out, but I believe you'll have no more glaucoma in Jesus' name. So Lord, I thank you that all issues with the vision, Lord, go right now in the name of Jesus. There's somebody, you have thyroid issues. Um, I feel like this is for a female, but this could also be for a male as well. If you have a thyroid issue in your body, will you lift your hands up and lift them high? Okay, there's several of you. Come on, church, you know what to do. Lord, I thank you that all these thyroid issues go right now in Jesus' name. Those that are having issues with fatigue, uh, hormonal imbalances of any kind, fertility issues of any kind, Lord, any imbalance, Lord, I thank you right now in Jesus' name. I speak to your body body and I command it to line up with the blood of Jesus right now. You will be regular in every area in the name of Jesus, even those that are suffering with cycle issues, females that have irregular cycles. I command them to be whole in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, every issue, any female issue in this area, I command wholeness right now in Jesus' name. Ear issues, there's someone that you get ringing in the ears and you have ear issues. If that's you, lift up your hands. Come on, God is moving right now. He's telling touching his people. All ear issues go right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that those ears will be whole. No more ringing in the ears. No more blockage in the ears. There's someone that you get like vertigo. Is anyone in the room get vertigo because of ear issues? Okay, there's several of you. Heal that imbalance right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that any issues with the ear, Lord, they will be clear and whole in the name of Jesus. There's someone that you have issues with your joints in your right hand. Is 
is that you? Anyone you have issues with your joints in your right hand? Okay, there's still several in the room. If that's you online, there's no distance with Jesus. Receive what God is doing here in the room. I thank you, God, that all joint issues go right now. In Jesus' name, any joint issues. I specifically see the right hand, but I believe God's healing all joint issues in the room. I thank you, Father, that they go right now. In Jesus' name, there's someone that you had an injury in your knee. Years ago, you have an injury in your knee. I don't know which one, but I just hear there's several of you. Okay, if you're near them, come on, just stretch your hands to them and believe that God is going to touch them. Jesus is the healer, and this belongs to the children because Jesus is above every sickness. So I thank you, Father, that all these issues in the knee, inflammation specifically in the knee, goes right now in the name of Jesus. We command every nerve pain, every damage, every organ issue. There's someone, God is healing your left uh, ankle. I feel heat on my left ankle. God is healing you. If that's you, I want you to start moving it out on faith. If you have an issue with your left ankle, I command all that pain to go right now in Jesus' name. Is there, as if you, that's you, can you start to move it around if you have an issue with your left ankle? Can you just wave at me if it feels better, please? Is there anyone that God is healing? My left ankle is burning up you in the back right there, God. Can you, is there pain? Is it, is it gone? No pain? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody with asthma, God is healing somebody with asthma. Come on, keep praying, saints. Come on, keep praying. God is touching his people. Lord, I thank you that all the breathing complications go right now. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Father, that they'll be able to take a deep breath. If that's you and you have issues with asthma or breathing, why don't you just try doing something that you couldn't do before? See, God is moved by your faith. That activates him to move. You remember as we were talking about last week, when the, when the children of God were going into the promised land, they had to take a step into the water water and then the water parted so you need to start doing it if, if, even if I haven't called it out God knows and God will heal you someone with nerve damage is getting healed I thank you Jesus right now there's a condition with a skin issue for a baby someone has a baby with a skin issue rashes they're pretty bad I don't know if there's someone in the room that has that but it's for a newborn baby Lord I thank you for healing right now in the name of Jesus thank you father thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Just thank him for a moment. Thank you, God, for all you've done. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Thank you, God, that you didn't leave us as orphans, Jesus, but you are faithful, God, that you heal your children, God, as your will to heal because you love us and you're such a loving father. There's somebody that you have like cyst in the ovaries. Is there anyone in the room that you have cyst in the ovaries and they, they rupture and sometimes they give you complications? I see someone in the back. It's hard to see with the lights. So if you can just lay, raise your hand, there's several cysts in the ovaries. I specifically feel for the left ovary but either one God is going to touch you if you're near that person just can you just pray for them if you're watching online receive this I thank you God that those cysts will dissolve right now in Jesus name all cysts dissolve right now in the name of Jesus I thank you for the blood thank you Jesus for the cross we you we know that you bore our sickness already Jesus so now we receive it like children by faith in Jesus name somebody has a thumb issue you have some issue with your joint right here on your thumb Lord I thank you for your healing power to flow that's you over there if you're still come on let's pray for that issue that it's it, specifically your thumb this area between your thumb and your and your other finger your pointer finger there's an issue right there Lord I thank you for healing that right now in Jesus name I thank you that all the pain goes in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord Amen. I thank you, God, that the healing will even continue when they leave church today, Lord. I thank you, God, where the children are. Just stretch your hand towards the children's area in the back. Lord, I thank you that any sickness in the children's area, God, from the nursery, Lord, to all the way to the youth, God, in this ministry, I thank you, God, that all sickness will go right now in Jesus' name. Allergies go right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God. I thank you for every issue of sickness to go right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that you leave no one out, even those working on the campus, Lord. Heal them too, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Father. Now, before we close, I had a dream a few nights ago, and I, I just want to have an invitation. You can come down to the front. I believe God is going to heal you from this. And maybe, Judy, if you can come up and just get ready, because I want to end with worship. But there are people in the room that I feel have been deeply offended by ministry. I feel like maybe you have been in a minute, or you have been in a ministry family. I, 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 and when I had this dream, I saw people, I saw wives that grew up in ministry. I saw children that grew up in ministry. Now, that doesn't mean your dad has to be a pastor or an evangelist, but if you grew up in ministry of any kind, can we stand real quick? Because I, I know this is could be an embarrassing thing, but I, God is gonna heal those that have had hurt in their heart specifically to ministry. I wanna make that invitation first, and then I feel God is gonna touch other people. So if that's you, and you grew up in ministry, or maybe you were married to a minister, or maybe you just something happened, but you've held on to this offense. I want you to come down here. It might just be a couple of you, but God is going to set you free today from that. Come down here. Yes, there's, okay, there's several of you. Specifically ministry related. There's been hurt and you haven't been able to let go of, thank you, Jesus. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Wow. Jesus is going to heal your heart today. Thank you. Come on, church. Just pray for them. If this isn't you, but these are your brothers and sisters. And I know what it's like to hold on to hurt with these things. And I know what it's like to be free. And it is God's will that his children are free today. We'll wait just a little bit longer. But when we start praying, you can come down here. Specifically hurt by ministry. Maybe a pastor hurt you in some way. Maybe you grew up in it in your family and you did not understand that God is not unkind. Sometimes people fail us, but Jesus will never fail you. Jesus is faithful. People make mistakes. People do things they shouldn't have to, but if you've ever blamed God for the mistakes of people and you've held on to offense and hurt in your heart, God is going to set you free from that today. Yeah, our prayer team, if you just want to start praying for them, I'm going to pray right now, and then we're going to go into a time of worship at the end, but God is going to set your heart hearts free from any hurt, any trial, any pain that you've walked through. Some of you, it's been years that you've been holding on to this hurt. But my prayer for you is that you will see Jesus for who he is, a loving father that would never leave you nor forsake you. He will never abandon you. He is faithful and he does not love us with conditions. His love is unconditional. So come on, Lord, just build that up a bit, Joel. Lord, I thank you, God, for healing them right now in Jesus' name. I come on, church, agree for them. These are your brothers and sisters. I thank you, God, that any offense, God, any hurt, God, any unforgiveness, Jesus, in their hearts, Lord, any shame, God, that has tried to take over their life of any kind, any shame for even their parents' mistakes, God. There's people that you deal with shame for things that you weren't even yours to deal with. They're just shame for things in your family, things in your generational line. There's shame, but God is going to set you free right now from that shame in Jesus' Jesus name. I thank you, Father, that all shame dies right now in the name of Jesus. Shame has no place with the child of Jesus, no place with the children of God. I thank you that shame dies right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, fear and doubt goes. Fear of failure go right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, who the sun sets free is free indeed. And we thank you, God, for your wholeness and your freedom. In the name of Jesus, I thank you all shame. I feel shame so strong. Every bit, come on, agree with this. People are getting free. Every bit of shame goes. Every bit of doubt, that feeling of not feeling good enough or worthy, that comparison that's in us, that comparison and fear of men, we kill that right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus that covers every mind, every heart, everyone in this room and those even watching online there's people watching online there's a child that your dad is a pastor and you've been running away from God because you don't understand the things that you've seen but Jesus is faithful I'm taught I know this feeling Jesus is faithful he's faithful to you he will set you free Jesus will not fail you he will never leave you nor forsake you come back to Jesus don't run from Jesus go to Jesus he is the only one that can set you free. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God.
Thank you, Jesus. Keep praying while we worship. Come on, people, our God is really moving.
thank you, Jesus, Lord, for what you did today. Thank you, Lord, for every healing, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for every salvation. Thank you, Lord, for lifting offense, for lifting every burden, Lord. You are the only one who can do this, Jesus. It is all because of you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for today. Can we just say thank you, church? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are. You are the healer, Lord. You are the healer. We love you, Jesus. We worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We love you guys so much, and we are so thankful for you guys to join us here today. We will see you guys tonight at Judah at 6 p.m., and then next week back here um, at Lake Brantley. And prayer team, if you guys could come up, and we'll have the prayer team up. Thank you guys so much. Bye. Michael and Jess here. We are standing on the exact location where the headquarters for Jesus Image will be. The local church, Jesus School, uh, House of Bethany, all of that will be located right here. In fact, in the exact spot where Jesse and I are standing will be the beautiful pond in front of the sanctuary where we will most likely be holding baptism services occasionally. So we're so excited. We're right here in Seminole County off of Lake Mary Boulevard. We own this land. God owns this land, I should say. And the building will be right behind us. The sanctuary, the admin building, and the prayer house. And so listen, we just wanna say thank you so much. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being so patient and believing with us. We're believing God that the nations will descend on this property, that they will worship Jesus, that the sick will be healed here, that the lost will be saved, that the presence and glory of God will rest here. We want that, we believe this is holy ground and that the tangible glory of Jesus will be right here on this land. And so we wanna invite you to come and invite you to be a part of what God is gonna do here. Yeah, we are just so very thankful for you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and support. We are truly blown away with what the Lord is doing and we cannot wait to have you here with us one day. Yeah, and we're really excited about what we're gonna show you right now. We wanna take you on a journey and show you the incredible design, detail, and vision of what will take place on this property. Our Jesus Image home will be located in the beautiful Seminole County right off of Lake Mary Boulevard. This is a thriving area filled with families, restaurants, and the beautiful amenities that this area provides. The vision of this property is simple. We want the presence of Jesus Christ to be known. We have a deep value for experiencing the Lord in His beauty and the majesty of His creation. This facility will host our local church family, Jesus School, which is our discipleship training program yearly conferences, the Bethany House of Prayer, and it will also be an outreach hub for the state and nation. There is vision behind everything. The location of the buildings, the landscaping, the water features, and of course the architectural design of the buildings themselves all speak to the beauty of the Lord. We want all who enter the property to feel as though they've entered into the peace of the presence of God. With all the stress and turmoil that people face on a daily basis, this will be a place of serenity, worship, reflection, and adoration. Rather than this feeling like a headquarters, we want this to be the house of God and a home for His people. You will notice that the structures themselves have a timeless look and design. From the stonework to the stained glass, it will feel like the house of God. The gospel will be declared from every side of the property in multiple different ways. As you pull into the new Jesus Image home, you will discover a massive parking area that will be framed by and filled with beautiful shrubbery and trees. There will be plenty of room for you and your family. A beautiful drive leads you to the sanctuary building. You will enter through a stone archway. Upon the archway, one of the foundational verses for Jesus' image will be inscribed. This verse carries the heartbeat of our lives and the construction of this house. Only one thing is needed, Luke 10, 42. Upon entering the front door to the main building, you will see a massive gathering area. 
It is a two-story structure. The first level will be filled with life. This will be a place to congregate with friends and family, to get your children checked into Children's Church, to eat, or simply enjoy a coffee around a beautiful fireplace. The first level will also house the youth room. We have a major focus on seeing this next generation love Jesus. The youth room will seat approximately 500 people. This room will also serve as the second year facility for Jesus School. Our children's rooms will be located on the first level. This will be a convenient experience for children and parents upon their arrival. Our children will receive amazing Bible teaching, a worship experience, and knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves. The second level of the main building will facilitate working spaces for our board of directors, our staff, and interns. This will be a great blessing for us as we move forward in wisdom as a ministry. As you know, God has graced Jesus' image with a massive reach through media. Thousands have come to Jesus, and so many have been healed and set free through our media ministry. We will have our very own production studio where we can create content and continue to stream live to the nations. We will release podcasts, social media content, videos, and much more. Multiplied millions have watched our media content, and we believe our creative team will flourish in this new space as they step out into this vital and anointed calling. As you walk across the main gathering space, you will discover the sanctuary. What an amazing space this will be. While we will have state-of-the-art technology in the sanctuary, the space will take you back in time, a time when churches had a sacred feel to them. You will discover beautiful stained glass behind the platform. Stained glass will line the sides of the sanctuary as well, all telling the gospel story of Jesus. There will be timeless wood beaming and stonework throughout. We long for his presence to fill this place, and it will be a home for you as well. We will seat approximately 1,500 people, yet it will not lose the personal feel that we so deeply value. The platform will be spacious with plenty of room for ministry, our worship teams, and of course, a baptismal. You will notice a round stained glass image on the back wall of the sanctuary depicting a dove in fire descending in the room. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts each time we gather as a church family. The sanctuary space will also serve Jesus School. This will house our hundreds of first year students as well as our general school sessions. These students will be missionaries to the nations of the world and to their generation. The gospel will be declared from this sanctuary space multiple times per week and people will be raised up from this place to share Jesus with the world. May millions be saved, healed, and touched by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, for our favorite space on the property, the Bethany House of Prayer. This will be the prayer house for Jesus' image. It will be a place for adoration, silent prayer, reflecting upon the scriptures, and worship. You will notice that the house will be built upon a pond. The setting will be quaint and breathtaking. Stone and wood mark the space with warmth and a traditional look that we believe will transcend generations. We believe this will be the hub of the entire property, a place where intimacy with God and pure prayer ascend before Him. It is named the Bethany House because Bethany was the place where Jesus was loved deeply. Therefore, He rested there. Mary found the better part, and it is our prayer that all who enter will find Jesus there and fall in love with Him. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped on this property. May his word be taught with clarity, boldness, and love. May his gospel flood the nations, and may the generations to come find him here. Will you stand with us? Will you pray and give toward this vision? Will you give sacrificially for the sake of Jesus and his gospel? Will you be a part of something that will outlive you for the sake of eternity? Thank you. We love you. Jesus is beautiful.